So this is the assumption that you've gone through the DHT, so you know how to minister healing. And so I just want to talk about <laughs> applying the, the ministry of healing um, with strangers out on the streets. So um, one of the things that I want to encourage you is just make up your mind in advance that you're going to love people and believe God for everything that He's got for them. And that even though you may feel uh, things of, you know, that fear or insecurity and that kind of thing, you're not just not going to submit to it. You're not going to worry about it because it's not about you. It's not about what they think about you. Just make up your mind. I'm going to love people with all my heart. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to love them. And just let love flow out of you. Let love look in you like it's going to look in you. Um, but don't hold the Spirit of God captive to your temperament, to your upbringing, to your background. Uh, let, all, let the Spirit of God stretch you and mold you into somebody who's just on fire loving people and can't be stopped. Okay, Don't be squeezed into the mold of this culture um, that, that is all about themselves and just always in a hurry and just always afraid of strangers and that kind of thing. Because you know what? I remember when 911 happened. You know, everybody in New York started being nice together out on the streets for a couple, couple of days because they like had this, you know, this experience had woken them up to the temporalness of life, how important people are, how shallow, you know, all the stuff that they spend all their time worrying about is when it's really about loving God and loving one another. You know, for some people, they were awakened to the fact that we need to love one another. Um, so I just encourage you. Um, and, and don't give any place to shame or fear. You have everything you need. If you needed a download, you'll have a download. If you need a word of knowledge, you'll get a word of knowledge. If you need a picture, you'll get a picture. Ask God, inquire, be with Him, uh, but just go for it. Um, and just believe God that He's going to do what He says He's going to do. He commanded you to heal the sick. He commanded you to speak the oracles of God. So lay your hands on the sick and speak the word of God into people's lives. Go for it. Um, be outgoing and start conversations. Um, so I just encourage you to the best of your ability, just just be friendly, be kind, be open, be inviting, be engaging with people. Um, and for different ones of us, it's going to look. So don't compare your outgoing with my outgoing. Just be outgoing for you. Be open. You know, be 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 somebody who says who talks to people. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to like I like to bring humor into things. Like a lot of times when people, I'm seeing them riding them sh shopping carts, you know, I'll say, oh, excuse me, sir, you, you better slow down. You're going way too fast in that thing, <laughs> you know, and I'll just chuckle, you know, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, they're like, you're on that, you know, and then, well, I got you stop wondering about my sanity, <laughs> you know, but so don't take yourself too seriously. Just take the kingdom seriously. Have a lot of fun and be, be relaxed and be yourself around people. Don't try to be me. Be you. All right, but be fun, be relaxed, and just enjoy people, love them. Just let the love of God go into people's lives. Um, so that's one thing. Starting conversations, one of the great ways to start conversations, you can make a comment, but the thing that starts the conversation is asking a question. Man, nice shoes. Where'd you get those? Now they got to tell me where they got the shoes. You shop there all the time? I don't give a rip about this. I'm starting a conversation because I care about them, right? I, you know, my son is a great impulsive question answer. He can just ask questions. Uh, you know, he can peel the paint off a house with questions sometimes. He's amazing. Um, but that's a gift of his. And so, you know, I just encourage you if, you, if you ask questions, you steer the direction of a conversation by the questions that you ask, Right? So, you know, if I ask you about your hair, then you're going to start talking about your hair. If I ask you questions about your, your children, you're going to start talking about your children. Why? Because I asked questions. I'm directing the conversation with the questions. Okay? And so you can start a conversation just by asking questions. And you'll see very often Jesus asked, he was a great question asker profound question asker. Sometimes people would say something to him and he would, he would respond with a question. You know? Or he would start the conversation. Who do people say that I am? General. Who do you say that I am? Personally. Right? So he would sometimes, he would start on a wider sphere and just work his way in. So sometimes you start that way of conversation with people. So, do you live up here or is this vacation for you? What do you, what do, you do when you're at work? Do you like it? 
you say, you know what? Can I share something with it that I something with you that I think will make you smile? And just go for it. And then, wow, how do you do that? I, you know, Jesus lives in me and he loves you. He's a, he thinks you're amazing. He died for you. He knows the hairs on your head. He calls you by name. He knows your name. Mm-hmm. You know, so it said, by the way, do you have anything that gives you any aches or pains or problems in your body? So a lot of times people are waiting for words of knowledge. Todd White, I love the guy. He gets words of knowledge about people's bodily conditions all the time. I'm still working on being faithful with what I got. So, you know, I'm like, you know, what do you need a word of knowledge for people's physical conditions when you're passing up people who are obviously in physical pain? They're what you're letting pain, you're letting crutches and arm slings and oxygen tanks and people that are limping uh, go by you all the time. Uh, what do you need a word of knowledge for that person for? Be faithful with what you got, right? So start being faithful. Step into those things. Um, and then the other thing that I encourage people to do is go for the words of knowledge for dummies. So you start a conversation with somebody. Hey, how's your day going today? Great, man. You're you know you're doing all this lifting and, and stuff like that. You're on your feet a lot. Hey, listen. A lot of people have to work in spite of how they feel. Do you have anything gives you aches or pains? Oh yeah, my knees are killing me. You know, I said not anymore. You know, I, I can help you with that. Really? What? Here, give me your hand. It's easier to show you than explain it. Give me your hand. <laughs> you know? <laughs> New knees right now in Jesus' name. You know? Move those around. See how they feel. Oh, man, that's weird. You know? Is it all better? Yeah, well, not all the better. But like a lot better. Okay, in Jesus' name, be healed. Right? So that's one of the ways is just simply just going for the words of knowledge for dummy just by asking questions hey do you have anything this and you can soften it you know because it's a little bit of a strange question but you so you can soften it by showing you know what you're respecting the, their 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 feelings but you know you're crossing a boundary see this might sound a little crazy to you but you know i just want to know do you have anything that gives you aches or pains or problems in your body at all and they're like well yeah, why do you ask? He said, because I, I, I can help people. I, I have this gift to help be able to help people get rid of their pain. Do you have something? You know, and you can tell them. That, see, and you're not talking at this point about your spiritual gift. You're talking, about, I got a gift. You know, it, it can work in you too. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's a gift of being a son of God. So, you know, you can let people know. You'll find your ways, but I encourage you, asking questions is a simple thing. So start a conversation and you might want to say, you know, listen, I just get the impression, I'd love to pray for you. Is there anything that you've got going on in your life that you need, uh, you could really use God's help? Or do you have any aches or pains or problems in your body? Because I know we want you well as well. You know, just, and they say, no, no, don't want any of that. No thanks. I pray at my own church, that kind of thing. Hey, God bless you. Dust your feet. Go to the next person. Don't, don't analyze it. Just as, and as you're walking, say, God, get them. Break through all those religious barriers in Jesus' name. I just declare openness. That, you know, Because you know what? You weren't the person. It wasn't the, the time that you could have got in there. You did your best. You know, But don't let that be, don't get wrapped around that telephone pole. Move on to the next one. And you're just going to find that, that there's just people out there who are ready, who you're the right person. God shows you the approach. Don't analyze it. All right, so they say, yeah, actually, I do have something wrong with my back. Then you can ask them, say, well, does, does it hurt now? You know, you can ask them about their, how long has it been hurting. You, you, you can do that if you want. Or you can just jump right in and say, really, right here? Yeah, let me put my hands on your back. I'm going to pray for you. So you already got your hands. I'm going to pray for you. So you let them know why you got your hands on them. But you're not asking, can I pray for you? You can ask if you want, but you're going to get more refusals that way. I just found that. And there's times where I still ask people because it's like, you know, they're getting a little bit antsy and they need to know why I'm asking all these questions. So I'll just go ahead and let them know. Yeah, I'd like to pray for you. I've seen God heal people. I know he wants you well. You know, so I just say that. And, and then sometimes I'll say no, and then sometimes I'll say, you know, listen, there was I, I just prayed for a lady the other day. She had the exact same condition. She was instantaneously healed. She had been dealing with this thing for 14 years. You've got nothing to lose except your pain. Give me 30 seconds. You know, and sometimes they said, no, 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 no. And, you know, fine. Go ahead. It's, it's no skin off your nose. You don't need them to accept you. You're not going out here for some affirmation to you, for you. You get your identity and your joy from your union with Jesus Christ. You do not get your joy 
from having demons subject to you. You are created to for demon to rule over demons. You were created to be one with God. Demons got in the way, so now you get to rule over them. But that's not where your joy came, comes from. Your joy comes from who you are with God. Things that I've found is that sometimes you'll say, hey, can I pray for you? And they say, sure, sure, and they'll keep walking, right? <laughs> and say, say, excuse me, no, I mean an instantaneous miracle. I've seen people healed. I want you to stop for just a second because God wants to heal you right now. So you need to get their attention a little bit. So that's part of what Jesus said. You know, proclaim your expectation. The kingdom of God is at hand. So you let them know that's your message. It's right here, right now, kind of thing. And so sometimes I'll let them know, and I'll just I'll just proclaim my expectation. I believe God you, God wants you well, and He's going to heal you right now. I want to believe God for that right now. So you just let them know. So you don't have to say I know 100. You know, but I but what we do know, I believe God wants you completely healed right now. Let, you know, so let me just minister to you real quick. And so here's what I do is I um, as I encourage people, pray very short, quick burst prayers. Pain, go right now. Be healed. You don't have to be loud. Volume doesn't heal people. Just be earnest and release the spirit. Right now, thank you, Father, for healing them. In Jesus' name, pain, go. Sickness, go. Be healed. Work properly. Okay, now move that around. And then it so a lot of the power from a swing comes from the follow-through. So make up your mind from the beginning you're going to follow through. What's a follow-through for healing? It's having them do something they couldn't do. Test it. Move it around. So make up your mind. You're not just going to pray for them. You're going to have them test it. So right now, in Jesus' name, all pain go. Thank you, Father, for healing them. Body come into line. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, move that around. Tell me what's changed. Right? So at first, I'll have them focus on the change. Tell me what's changing, right? Because I want them to, to, to sense that, to see that, to agree with that. Tell me what's changed. Oh, man, that's better. So sometimes there's pain, but now the pain's decreased. Yeah, that's better. So they're focusing on the decrease, not the fact that there's still some left, right? So tell me what's changed. Move that around. Tell me what's changing. Uh, it's still the same. No problem. Sometimes i got to pray more than once. I'm still growing. Right now, in Jesus' name, pain you go. Body be healed. Now move it. So if you got short prayers, there are no problem with you praying a second time. You you start breaking off, you know, thank you, Father, for them. Thank you in Jesus' name for all their blessing, you know, blah, blah, blah. Now, in Father, please, you know, big long prayer, then I ain't got time for this, you know. In Jesus' name, pain go, back be healed. Function properly now. Now move that around, see how that feels. Oh, no, it's not changed. Right, don't worry, it's working. In Jesus' name. I'm going to pray again. So, you know, you hit this a couple times. And you carry, every every situation is a little bit different. So there are times where you begin to sense that they're getting a little impatient and they're ready to walk away. Then, you know, if, if things are closing down and you've still not seen any change uh, visibly, just don't take your faith back. Just say, you know what, I can tell you're ready to go. I just want to let you know it's such an honor and a privilege to agree with heaven for your healing because you are so worth it to God. I believe God for your continued healing. And and when it happens, just know Jesus loves you. You're amazing. God bless you. Walk on. You know what, leave them with the Holy Ghost and the seed of the kingdom sown in their body and in their mind. And Holy Spirit will just do amazing things. They can take three steps down the road or three hours down the road. And all of a sudden things... <laughs> And they're like, holy smokes, that person, I thought they were nuts. I thought they were nuts. Oh, my gosh, I, that, they were nuts. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and, and all of a sudden, things have changed, and they're like dealing with a healed back in the name of Jesus planted right in their heart. Okay? It's not about you. It's cool when you see the instantaneous miracle. Believe God for it. Believe God for it. But when it's not, don't be afraid of it not happening because you know what? That doesn't mean nothing happened. Just just handle the interaction however it happens. Um, so does that kind of help a little bit? So you kind of know how to how to do that. And so when you're when you're doing that, when you're on a team, uh, uh, be in agreement. But also be listening to God. God, what do you got to say to them? You know, somebody might be ministering healing, and and you start you start getting ready to speak a word of encouragement into their life, or they might have somebody with them, right? You know, like the one person with the cane, 
is fine. They're ready to, to stay all day because they're ready to get rid of this pain. But the old man with them is like, you know, come on, we gotta get more. See, so, you know, uh, you know, you start engaging them in conversation. Say, you know, I just really like to encourage you. I know you've been really, um, uh, you know, taking care of your wife for such a long time, and God wants you to know that he sees that and that you're continuing to do that. And I know that sometimes you feel just like you're struggling under the pile of all that, you know, or whatever. You know, you just start ministering to them. So you're part of the team, so don't just let one person do it. Um, one of the ways that uh, for leaders, um, everybody's going to go out, and if you're kind of used to doing this, the, uh, kind of a confident one, uh, we're going to have a confident one on every, every team, okay? Um, but every when we come back, everybody's going to be confident, all right? But if if so, when you go back home and you start taking people out, your job is to is to go through some of the awkward stuff of engaging people and starting the conversation, you know. And like a lot of times, I'll take them right up to the threshold to say, "Oh, okay, great." You know what? This is so awesome that we stopped you because my friend here prays for the sick and God uses them to heal people. He's going to pray for you right now. You know, and don't go, Aah! you know, don't do that. Just say, yeah, you step right in there in Jesus' name. Right now, back, be healed, you know, <laughs> and say, now move that around. You take over from that point, all right? But we've done all the hard stuff. We've stopped the person. We found the person, that kind of thing. A lot of times when people are working, ask them, you know, hey, you're on your feet a lot. Do you have anything that gives you any aches or pains or problems in your body? And they might say, no. And then you say, you know what, I ask this because I've seen so many people having to work and I've seen God heal people and I know he wants you well. He loves you so much. In fact, while I'm speaking to you, I just really believe God wants you to know. And they just start prophesying. <laughs> you know, they didn't need healing, so just go around. You know, left hook missed, so come around with the right. <laughs> you know, just there was nothing that they needed there, so come on with the other side. So you're not, you know, like, well, okay, see you later. So you've always got something, some way that you can minister the kingdom into somebody's life. You got the left hand and the right hand. You got the spiritual weapons in the right hand and the left hand. You got the words. You got the power, and they're all powerful, divinely powerful to tear down strongholds. So, does that help? A little bit. All right. Um, maximizing ask opportunities. Um, at, if you see somebody get healed, you know. Or you speak a word in their life, say, you know, and it connects with them. And you can tell, you know, you don't have to force the interaction past where they have grace. You know, there's times where, you've, where I've been with people and I've sensed, okay, this interaction has become more about you getting your agenda done for them than ministering life and love and truth to them. So I always keep it on, you know what, they're, they're receiving, this is for them. And so when I start feeling like they're shutting things down, then I just leave them with what they received. You know, uh, you can turn a good interaction into a bad interaction because you just didn't know when to stop. You know, the last, the last, the first impression was like really good, but then all of a sudden it was overwhelmed by a, 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 the last impression, which was, man, they just kept preaching at me and they just wouldn't stop. You know, I kept sending off all these signals and they were purposely <laughs> ignoring my signals. You know, it makes you feel like disrespected as a person. And so that's not what this is about. This is about loving other people. Um, and so if you begin to see that, just say, do you, you got to go somewhere? Do you, really, you know, I don't, I don't want to take more of your time. Than, you know, I just enjoy speaking this in your life. Say, yeah, actually, i got to go. Say, hey, man, I love you. God bless you. He loves you, too. You're amazing. Nice to meet you. Take off. Let him go. You know? Um, I had a great illustration. Come here. All right, put your hands off in the front, okay? All right. See, now, why are you pushing back? Because I'm, I'm pushing, yeah. See, when, when you push, it's just the natural response for them to get equilibrium. They have to push back as, as hard as you're pushing. So if you push, they're going to have to push back. So the, we, we do this emotionally, right? So if you feel like you're pushing them, you know what they're doing inside? They're they're putting a wall up, but if there's if there's no wall and there's this sort of this pull, then you can just keep you can just keep sewing into that. Pull. Yeah, do you know Jesus? No. You know, let me explain to you a little bit of it, and then share your testimony. Right? They just got healed. 
Jesus loves you. You're amazing. Everything he did, he did for you. He suffered on the cross so that you can be forgiven. And what he did in your body, he wants to do in your heart. He can do it in your whole life, make you all brand new. Do you know him? Not like that. Would you like to? Yeah, I'd love to.